we're not wasting any more time. We've got the Black Panthers group. We're going to call upon Brother Marley to give a presentation on the Black Panthers group and what the Black Panthers group is all about. How did it come about? Why did it come about? What is it all about? What is it here for? What purpose it is serving to our community? And we are going to hear that from our brother Marley as he comes on. Give him a black eye. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, kings and queens. The, the father's group felt that you know, I should be the person who should be part of that, who should be the chairman of that father's support group. Because I had this, this um, very, this, this thing. I, I love seeing a father with his son or his daughter. Yeah. I get real creepy with it when I'm on the road. I'll see someone and I'll just start smiling at them with their children. And, and they look at me like I'm a bit strange. But it's only because what I want for our community is family. Because through family, then we can have strong communities. Yeah. Through strong communities, we build powerful nations. Yeah. Through powerful nations, we start to build empires. Yeah. And that's what we're here about, right? Yeah. All right. So, I'm not a historian, I'm not, but I recognize good leadership. I marvel at great accomplishments. And Marcus Messiah Garvey was one of those people that he could actually be inspired by, and the people that he inspired were also inspiration. Everyone from Malcolm X, Dr. Luke, Dr. Lamar Johnson, yep. I call him Uncle Leader and Dapper. Yep. Great men like these have been put forward to us yep. through their inspiration of what Marcus and Sai said, right. and pretty much more what he actually accomplished. Yep. But because I represent the Black Barber Support Group, I really want to talk about how his philosophies and how his teachings impact us men, us fathers, us grandfathers, and how we can be the best leaders and teachers in our family. You see, we had great kingdoms, great empires, and it was family that was at the heart of all of that. It decided what speciality you have. Were you going to be uh, a, a mason, or was you going to be a warrior? Would you be someone who deal with bronze sculpture, or would you be an astrophysicist? It was family that would decide who you're going to marry. Yes. It would be family who would decide how many people, how many women you could marry, right? It's true. Right. right. It was family that would decide where you would live. It was family that was at the heart of all of it. Before a boy was recognized as a man, he would have to go through mental, emotional, psychological, and physical tests to ensure that he could hold the mantle and the responsibility of manhood. But, but not now. Ever since we've been ripped away from our cultural home, come on, come on. our families, we've been getting everything twisted. We look outside ourselves for answers as to what being a man looks like. Right. We want to be called anything but African. We want to be called Negro. We want to be called niggers. We want to be called black, colored, the explorer, mixed. Mulatto, Afro-Latin, Afro-Latin American, yeah. we want to be called Melanated, Moorish, we want to be called Israelite, Holy Latin. But for some reason we have this disconnect between us and Africa. Over here in the UK, there are many black men 
who saw, see themselves as 100% British. The English don't like you. The Welsh don't want you. You don't want to go to Scotland and you still call yourself 100% British. But it goes deeper than that family. Marcus said, I would not give up a continent for an island. See, he saw the big picture, but many of us are limited by small island views. Am I allowed to say that? Some of us are. Many of us are unwilling to give up our islands for the continent. Many of us don't understand that it was the same boat that would go over to the ports in Nigeria, in the Gambia, in Ghana, pick up our family and then transport them to places via Paris, Liverpool and West India King Dock here in London. It's the same port. It's the same port that our Queen Mothers so here's the question you key, right? There it is back when our family would be traded along with sugar and along with rum. We would be part of the commodity. People don't recognize that these places in London right now are the same places that our family would be tortured. Well, most of our family would be stuck on the boat ready to be taken over to the Caribbean, New York, so on and so forth. Some of our sisters will be dropped off right here. And some of our sisters will then only look forward to a life of systematic rape, torture, disease, and death. And you call yourself 100% British. Look, if you were born in the Caribbean, okay, you are not Caribbean. You are an African born in the Caribbean. Okay? If you were born in London, you're not a Londoner. You're an African.
No one else is going to tell them. No one else is going to tell you. I'll be soon finished, don't worry. No one else is going to tell you your rightful place. No one's going to tell you your rightful place. No one outside is going to do that. No one else is going to say, up you mighty race. Do as you shall will. Our job on this earth, gentlemen, is to impose our will upon it. That's what we're here to do. Repatriation was a central theme of Marcus and Sai Garvey's whole process. But he never said, I want all black people to go to Africa. Why? Because so many people are confused. If you could go to if you could win the next election and say, all right, if you're of African descent, you need to come out of the country. Three quarters of the people would be crying, holding on to their life for their white friends, saying, please, not me. I want to stay here in England. They would fight for their right to stay here in England. People who went over there, some of them, the first place they'll go to is to try and find a job center plus in Africa so they can sign on. <laughs> some sisters, We'll get out there and be like, I can only go if I can find the best Peruvian weave and the best hair perm products before I get out there. Some people would starve to death but they can't find a morning's chicken or chip shop to go to in Africa. So if you're not interested in coming to Africa, it's fine. Africa doesn't need you. Right now what we need is to start building up our motherland. We need to, as men, as families, as brothers and sisters start working together to build up our motherland. You can't come if you've got Becky with a fake tan on your arm. I'm sorry. And speaking of Becky... No, Becky's not allowed. Sorry. Speaking of Becky, too many of our men are partnering up with white women. And they keep going up and saying, make excuses. Yeah. They keep whining about how difficult black women are. They keep talking about how hard work black women are. Some of them say, I can't help who I fall in love with. I can't help it. Right. <laughs> I say, learn who you're dealing with. Because I think that all of us would be a little bit angry if we were the most at-risk person living in a system of white supremacy. I think if we were black women and we were getting paid less than white women, who are complaining about getting paid less than white men, we might be a little bit angry. I think that if we were statistically more likely to be abused by a black man, we might be a little bit angry about that. So it's about time we start showing us some respect and start giving them a blight. Because at the end of the day, if you want to start seeing less of that, you need to build yourself up. Marcus Messiah Garvey was a man about building up himself and building up his family. Because when he went up and he did that, people could rely on him. And when they could rely on him, everything was crisp. He didn't go to white people looking for that. My last point is, my last point, I can see this, I can see it. My last point is this. Let me get to my last point. <laughs> you can love Becky all you want mm -hmm. after the end of slate, after the end of racism. All right. In three simple words, Black Wives Matter. All right. Okay, good. We've been running for eight years now with Black Wives Matter. It was starting because of a lie that us fathers don't care about our children. And yet every weekend, you'll, if you go around Brixton every weekend, you'll see brothers taking their children for the weekend. During the weekend, you'll see brothers moving their children in the parks. We do love our children. We do love our families. We are here. We are strong. And we are willing to do whatever it takes to make sure our families thrive. So I invite you all, if you're a man, Come back next week, join us upstairs. We'll be here, we'll be able to chop it up. If you're a sister, please come down next week, join the sister circle so they can be a part of it. If you want to learn a bit more about membership, see Carl. Carl, please uh, let everyone, come forward, Carl, so everyone can see your face. 
Alright, this program up here, please go and see Carl, he'll talk to you about membership, alright? But thank you very much for listening. My name is Molly from the Black School.